everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison for where I'm from number 82 with Lisa. Um, what have you been reading? I read, um, Ani Arnaud's book, A Woman's Story, which is the English translation of the title. Um, and I'm a fan. This is my second one of her books. And I had never read her before, uh, she won the Nobel prize. What's the other one? I'm blanking. Um, but I, I really think she's impressive, and I, I look forward to reading more. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Can you I, hear me? I can. How nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, too. Yeah, I was just looking at your poem, and I saw you editing it. <laughs> I was going to, and I thought, man, I'll leave it there. She's probably downloaded. It's like, let it go. I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till I stop seeing her do things. Before I start, I started to oh. change it, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna leave it alone. I just like. I think it's beautiful, so yeah, I think it's worse. Um, how are you today? I'm good. It's a Friday. Mm -hmm. Trying to get some stuff finished so I can take off early and you know mm -hmm. enjoy the good weather we're having today. But not sure I'm gonna hit my goal, but that's okay. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Lisa and I met on a podcast with Tanya Todd discussing stamped um, racism, anti-racism, and you, a remix by Eva Max Kendi and Jason Reynolds, which is yeah. one of my favorite books. And that was a great conversation. So it was a great conversation. Yeah. And I thought, and then I hit up Lisa immediately after to see if she <laughs> <laughs> like to read a poem and and she agreed and so thank you i know i was like what was i thinking about a week ago I'm like, what was i thinking but i did it and it was fun. i haven't written a poem in a long time so when i was done and kind of polished it i thought okay that was kind of fun okay. so i'm glad i'm so happy it. to hear yeah. that i i've heard from various people that it was a nice reminder that it, that poetry is part of us and yeah and as we grow older we oftentimes are like oh you know i'm not a poet so i'm not gonna engage in this and then it's like oh actually this, you know yeah. it brings out different parts of us than i think prose does yeah you know? it does it does yeah those those short like being really particular about adjectives when you have a paragraph it's really, really different than when you've got a line it's true. to get the feeling mm -hmm. or the thought across. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a little bit more precise. And um, and it's funny because there were lines I would put down, and I'm like, where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. I need to come up with something snazzy. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, no, this is about me, and that came from someplace. So I need to go with whatever the intuition mm -hmm. uh, came from. But it was like, where'd that come from? Um, which was, was part of the fun mm -hmm. of exploring this um that it's supposed to be where i come from and there were times where lines would come from weird places and i'd be like i need to change that and make it more interesting and i finally said to myself no you need to let the poem flow through you the way the poem wants to flow through you mm -hmm. and that's when i kind of relaxed and quit trying to control it mm -hmm. and more just wrote it and that's when it got kind of fun mm -hmm. Isn't that a great feeling, yeah. too? For, I mean, as a writer, I love it when I feel magic or whatever word you want to use. The muse, magic, something yeah. sort of just like showing up. And oftentimes it's about our characters, right? When we're writing right. that this is about us. So it's a, you're, yeah. you're turning the gaze on yourself, which can be uncomfortable sometimes or, yeah. you know, unusual. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to go ahead and read it? Sure. Where I'm From by Lisa Rang. I am from house shoes, from Aunt Jemima pancake mix and library books. I am from the townhomes of Parade Park, old, once black owned, dying now from promises unkept. I am from the yucca cane, whose sturdy brown stalks will tough sword like stalks sprouts I envy. I'm from gatherings at Mama Dee Dee's and athletic prowess from Pat and Kenny. I'm from the tendency towards boisterous holidays and jamming to the Motown sound. 
from Clean Your Plate, and I'll give you something to cry about. I'm from Baptist beginnings diluted by Lutheran baptism and shedded private school Catholicism. I'm from Kansas City, American Black, cornbread and sweet potato pie. From the shortstop stylings of great grandpa in the giants of the Negro Leagues, from the medical degree my mom gave up to have me. In the back of my closet is a box full of sorted pictures peeking from mementos, cataloging my trials and greatness from K through 12. I am from those memories, boxed but not forgotten, roots sinking deep as I blossom and become. Yay! Yay. I loved it. Uh, yeah. and I, I would tell you the first line. So I am from house shoes, and I said, think of them organ, and I kept going, where the heck did that come from? And I kept trying to change it, and something in me wouldn't let me change it, and when I finished it and was reading it through this morning before I shared it with you, I thought, I know where that comes from. Like, you know, as a kid, all through my kid, my mom always wore house slippers. She didn't walk around barefoot or in socks. So sometimes when you were like in there watching just a few too many cartoons, you could hear her house slippers, right? <laughs> Either coming down the steps or coming down the hall. And it was like, oops, put that away. Put that. So the sound of my mother's house slippers is apparently a really strong memory in me that I didn't know was a strong memory in me until I sat down to write this poem. So I love that. And I think this poem is so good at, at conjuring sounds and sense and flavor you know that's one of the things I really appreciate about the prompt is yeah. it, it kind of forces it forces me yes I am from house shoes you heard her correctly that's the first line of the poem I am from house shoes um <laughs> and I I love that uh, it's funny I I think a lot of people would agree with you that the first line surprised them mm. like you know they think oh I'm gonna write something sort of grandiose or symbolic or you know and it's just uh mine is i'm from bathing suits which is not something i would necessarily think but then once yeah. i wrote it I was like oh yeah i was always in my bathing suit running around you know you know it's funny you said that because we say we think it's going to be grandiose and big mm -hmm. so i am from house shoes like on its face doesn't sound big but once i left it and just let that muse or whatever come to me I understand that it actually probably was really grandiose but I just didn't understand that it was until I let it be in the words on the page and I think that's probably what surprises us even you I think when you really kind yeah. of thought about where that impetus came from there was a sense of oh yeah I get it now mm -hmm. I get it now I agree yeah. I totally Totally agree. And I think for me, it's partially, and I don't know if this is true for you, but that is really my younger self, mm -hmm. much younger. And, and I don't think about her as much as I think no. about other parts of myself. So just sitting with her was a, was a powerful experience and just saying, mm -hmm. Hey, tell me, you know, where are you from? What, what is, what is foundational in, in who I am and who we are? I, I just, I, I love listening to people's poems because you don't get to talk about this stuff with people at our age, no. you know, generally no. like, Hey, what were you like at six? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and like library books, when that came out, I knew that was like, I spent my life in the library. I read all the time. I'd rather be in my room with a book than outside playing with other people, you know? So I got that. But when you were talking about younger self, that line where it says, um, cataloging my trials and greatness from K through 12. And it came out K through 12. And that's another line I kept thinking, but I'm more than through high school. Like I am more, but no matter what I did, something said, no, that's it. And I realized this encapsulates a lot of who I was before I went off to college. That's my younger self or somewhere in me, I see that as my younger self. And that also was kind of, kind of provoking. It is. Um, it is. And I think, I mean, I agree with the comment that they could picture everything you said, your poem so evocative. I, I totally agree. It felt like, uh, I mean, it was very transporting. And I thought that line was because I feel very similarly about K through 12. There is something about K through 12 yeah. where you really, 
life, they are cataloging you. I mean, you're doing it to yourself, but they are also doing it to you. You know, there are so many grades and citizenship scores and, you know, like you're constantly being classified and your worth is being determined by things that are eh, not necessarily. (laughs) Not as first. Academy as they make you think they are. Right. You're exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. Twelve yeah. school. Yeah. You think like, oh, this is determining. I was actually telling a story not long ago. You know, getting pulled into the office, being told this is going on your permanent record, and you know, I had four older siblings, so I who got in a lot more trouble than I did. So I knew like that was a farce. But mm. that attitude, you know, yeah. that you take take with a 14 year old or a 10 or 15 year old this is gonna affect the rest of your life you know Mm -hmm. Eh, not if you not if you don't treat me completely inappropriately like if you just talk with me and we work work through this it's all gonna be okay (laughs) and and i love what one comment is like i never made anything in college that showed up (laughs) on the refrigerator door exactly like right yeah. And I have two daughters who went to the same high school wow. and they took some of the similar classes, especially at in senior year when you're taking ceramics or you're taking some, you know, so I have similar creative items stored on my shelf. And sometimes they come home and be like, well, that one's mine. No, that one's not. No, wait a minute. There. I said, first of all, they all mine because I'm keeping them. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And half the time they don't remember who did which one. Like I have to. No, no, no. That one's Allie's. That one's Jordan's. Like, and quite frankly, they're all mine. So take your hands off of them. <laughs> um, and you kind of see that re- repetition, mm-hmm. you know, that they they went through, but how different they were in that experience, which also shows in the different way the art that I've saved from each of them even though it came from it came from the same course how the art is different and and to me that's an experience of how we all experience certain things different even if we're in the same family and we're in the same high school there's still a different impression uh-huh. on who we are and like if my brother had written this poem what came out in his first line or what he remembered or what was would be totally different i'm totally sure of that you know so Absolutely. it's 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 really yeah it's i i love this poem and i'm like oh my god i haven't written a poem i probably haven't written a poem since college honestly if I think about it, I'll have to think about it, really. Well, I wrote a short poem once um, during a writing class mm-hmm. um, with some teenagers as mm-hmm. like, I model, you do, but mm-hmm. this is like the first poem I think I've written from the heart since college. So it's a little, I love I'm going to have to that. save this and stick it up I somewhere. love that. I'm, that makes me really happy. And I have really wanted to have siblings on here. So I don't know if your brother would ever want to join me, but if he did, he's more than welcome because I would love that because I completely agree with you. And I was just listening to Maggie Smith, the poet, talk about her mm-hmm. new memoir. And she, and I haven't read it, it's sitting on my bookshelf, but she says in the beginning that it's not a tell-all, it's a tell-mine. And that, mm-hmm. and I love that. And she talked yeah. about in the interview, like the same thing you're saying. Like siblings living the exact same life a, you know, a parent supposedly sort of um, would have totally different experiences and what resonated for them, what they remembered. And I just, anyway, I would love to have siblings on here because I've, I would be so curious to see where the overlap would be and, you know, if there would be any at all. Yes. Yeah. That's a thing that's uh, really interesting. And I mean, my siblings and I have such a different recollection of our childhoods. Like when I talk to them, I'm like, were we in the same place? <laughs> like, uh, okay oh, interesting and I've gotten much better at just going okay that's your experience this is my experience um yeah but when I was younger I really wanted everyone to have validate my experience you know in order for it to feel real to me I felt like I needed them yeah. to tell me it happened where now I'm like okay my my version's enough I can, yeah I can believe myself um so I I think it is I think memory is endlessly fascinating and that's part of the reason I like this poem too yeah. how it brings things and uh and surprises people I mean like you said you were surprised yeah 
lots of surprises here. Mm -hmm. Good surprises, mm -hmm. um, nice. curious surprises, um, but yeah, I, I, even the part is like, well, let me think about family and stories and, you know, and to be honest, we didn't talk a whole lot about my great grandfather who played in the Negro Leagues. But I know the first time I found out about it, I thought it was cool. And then slowly, you know how once you learn something, you see it other places. Yeah. So I'm in Kansas City where we have the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And um, shortly after that, I went and there was a book available in their shop. Well, it has a picture of my grandfather in it wow. with his team. And I'm like, okay, I have to have this book. Oh, that's amazing. So, you know, and so, you know, so little things like that. And so even though we really didn't talk about it that much, there's something about that memory that would slowly come up mm -hmm. over time that I just thought was really cool. And so when it was time to talk about family and people and stories, you know, the Negro Leagues and my great grandfather is what came to mind. Um, yeah. So, and, and I do talk about athletes. I am from a family of athletes. So, you know, on my dad's side, everybody, aunts, uncles, cousins, it, it, like, my children, like my children, both my daughters are all American track stars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, you know, it's there, but uh, he, maybe he's where we all, mm -hmm. you know, get, where it comes, like initially comes from, you know, but um, so that was kind of just exciting to um, think about those memories and those ancestors who've come before us and what effect they may have on our current lives. Because they do, right? And yep. I, I love this poem too, that it, it, it prompts us to consider those things. And, and like you say, just a small story and how we can sometimes then find meaning and help us define ourselves through these yeah. small little pieces and, and finding a picture of your ancestor. What a beautiful thing. Cause those are not easy to come by. Um, yeah. I treasure that. Yeah. I, I really do. Yeah. What a, I don't know. I'm sure the feeling must have been surreal yeah. when you saw it. Yeah. Like, yeah. no, this couldn't possibly yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love it when life surprises, pleasantly surprises us. Yeah. Those are things to treasure. So, <laughs> Um, any other thoughts on the poem or, or? Yeah, I, I, I think those were the things that, um, really jumped out at me most. Um, when I, one thing that threw me about plants and I kept I thinking, well, we need a strong one. I kill plants. I'm... I kill plants. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my so I'm like, like okay, let me think of all the tough to kill plant. And about the only thing I kept growing for years and years and years was a yucca plant that grew into this big tree because it doesn't need much care. Like yeah. you water it once a month and it would keep growing. But there's also some beauty in that because it's got really sturdy leaves and a strong stock. And I thought, well, you know, if I'm really going to think about a plant that somehow there's a bond there and maybe there's a little bit of that me, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what the line where it's like the, the, the sword like uh, sprouts I envy cause it's tough and it's strong and you touch it the wrong way. That's, gonna, that's that, what I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> yeah. Cause when we, cause there's tons around here, I remember going to camp as a kid and they take you on the nature walk and okay, this is a yucca plant. Don't touch it. Yeah. And if you do, don't you dare push their hand. To, you know, they tell you the horror story. Yeah. If you push your hand into it, you'll get stabbed. And, you yeah. know, um, and then we made rope out, out of it, too. And it was just the most versatile and, yeah. like you say, strong, determined. Like, yeah. it's going to live. And I just, yeah. so Yaka is very evocative for me specifically. And I just thought that was beautiful. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, how much, how we can, how we can, take inspiration from the natural world, our families, our histories, yeah. our, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's powerful. So I, I thought your, your poem really spoke to that, where we can well, find, good. yeah, where we can yeah. find inspiration and power, you know, like, it's, it's all these places, <laughs> you know, better than um, the mode in the produce board. Yeah, it's definitely better than I do that too, but, um, <laughs> That's also, yeah. I mean, mold is, you know, got its own power. It, it keeps going it, too. Uh, true. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Um, but yucca is probably a little more uh, poetic. Yeah. 
yeah. in this instance. I thought, I thought at least for mm -hmm. my poem, mm -hmm. the yucca was was more appropriate yeah. than the mold in the produce drawer. <laughs> and currently, I hope there's no mold in <laughs> my produce drawer, but I haven't checked in a while, so who knows? Mm -hmm. So, well, I thank you, Lisa. I'm I'm so glad that you agreed to join me and that you shared your poem and I appreciated our conversation and and I hope we we like reunite in another conversation with Tanya or something like that because it's always a pleasure to see you, know, you. I, I love that you asked me to do this um, and that I push myself a little <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to do it mm -hmm. and to not weenie out um, it was really a fun experience for me and I even love, like talking about it and and we seem to talk and analyze literature first step to now this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We have to have enough. Maybe I need to have an Instagram live and invite you. So okay. I'll have to come up with something for you to participate. Okay. In. I'm in. Does it matter? I'll, I'll be there. And uh, if not, we can, we'll, we'll let's prod Tanya. Cause I'm sure she'll do more band book conversations. We'll just be like, Hey, Tanya. She's yeah. so good at getting people together. Yeah. Um, endlessly grateful to her for how many wonderful people she's introduced me to. She is such a Same. generous, brilliant Same person. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Okay. Well, well there's so a thank, thank you. you to Tanya. <laughs> thank you, Tanya. Yeah. Thank you guys for yeah, joining thank us. Thank you so and, much. Uh, and thank you. Lisa. Everybody have a great day. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.